Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson from the Kojak Legacy Edition. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This is the second lesson in Unit 2 of our spring quarter. All the lessons in April is focusing on Jesus and the Davidic Covenant. Bible Scripture for today, Sunday, April 14th. Is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 4 through verses 16. Lesson title is An Eternal King. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. For loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, to reconcile us back. To you and we say thank you thank you a lord for your love now lord help us help us to be faithful help us to be faithful to what and who you have put in our care and we say thank you bless every listening ears bless every hearts cause hard stony hearts to be softened and believe Bless every teachers, give encouragement, give understanding, give strength, and we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into four sections. Section one will deals with a house reflecting his glory that's uh, verses four through verses seven section two will deals with god protected david and that's verses eight through verses ten section three will deals with an eternal kingdom and that's verses 11 through verses 13 Section four will deals with David in Israel's history, and that's verses fourteen through verses sixteen. Aim for this lesson is that we recognize the significance of making God a major part of planning and inheritance for our descendants. That we feel the need to keep trusting God even when he denies our request. And decide to seek God's heart and to be in his presence. Before we go to our printed text, we will just add a little bit of background. So we're still in that study of what prophet foretells. In this a chapter Second Samuel chapter 7, a God established a covenant with David for a kingship that would never end. And this promise right here was a direct foreshadowing of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. The one who would ultimately fulfill uh, this covenant. The story of the Davidic covenant begins with David, uh, David's desire to build the Lord a house, a house uh, for the Ark of Covenant. Remember, around this time, uh, David had uh, brought uh, the Ark of Covenant uh, back to Jerusalem, and uh, it was a time of peace for David. David was resting. He uh, was experiencing peace. The Lord had allowed him to uh, conquer all his enemies and now he was resting, settling in his palace. That is when he uh, got this idea that, you know, I'm, I'm resting, I'm having a, a good time in my palace, but the Lord's uh, tent is out there just out there. And so uh, this is when he went to Nathan, the prophet, for uh, some, kinds of, some kinds of advice. 
And without asking the Lord or without hearing from the Lord, uh, Nathan replies with a go ahead. Do what is on your mind for the Lord is with you. Again, without getting any confirmation from the Lord or without asking, that uh, was Nathan's own assumption. He assumed that the Lord was with David. Again, very important, without getting any uh, confirmation from the Lord. Didn't even ask him if that was the right thing to do. David might have had a good intention, wanting to honor the Lord and to give back his best, but the problem is, the Lord did not give the okay to do it. And Nathan was wrong because he encouraged David as a spiritual leader. He encouraged David to go ahead without even consult the Lord. Nathan uh, more likely was pulling on David's relationship with the Lord, assuming uh, that David also hears from the Lord, so it was okay. Do what's on your mind. We should never, ever assume that our desires to do certain things for the Lord is okay the way we want to do it, that it's automatically okay that the Lord automatically accepted it because we think we we think it's a good idea our ways is not his ways and his ways is not ours and our plans are not his plans and his plans is not our plans so we always have to get the go ahead first before we proceed in doing anything we will now go to section one. It will deal with a house reflecting his glory. Verses four through verses seven, reading from the King James Version. Verse four, Second Samuel 7, verse four. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, verse five, Go and tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, Shall thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Verse 6. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Verse 7. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Okay, so we see several things are taking place right here. And it came to pass. In response to David's desire to build the Lord a house and Nathan's uh, instructions to okay for him to do it, the Lord responded in this way. We see in these verses right here, the Lord, he responded in at least three points. He, he made at least three three points. Point number one, David was the wrong person. David would not uh, be the one the Lord would choose to build him a temple. Later on, uh, David will explain to his son, because the Lord will put things in place, will straighten things out. He would later on explain to his son in First Chronicles, chapter 22 and verse 8. In First Chronicles uh, 22 and verse 8, it says, But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed blood abundantly, 
and have made great wars, you shall not build a house unto my name, because you have shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Verse 9, Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. So, we see uh, here that David was the wrong person. Point number two, the wrong time. The Lord did not want a temple at that time. The people uh, were always moving around in the tent. The tent uh, or the tabernacle later on would symbolize uh, the Lord's presence. It was a symbol of God's ability to be with his people on the move. Wherever they go, the portable tent would follow them. Start with uh, Moses. Moses used uh, the tent as a meeting place. And after that, uh, the tabernacle was built. Moses, uh, he no longer needed the tent. However, the tabernacle also was a temporary tent that was movable. And in the law that God gave Moses, he provided a Moses with specific instructions to build a place of worship for him. Specific instructions. So David couldn't just take it up on his head to go build the Lord a house. And that uh, tabernacle instructions, it's in uh, Exodus chapter 25. And, you know, when we think about uh, what David's uh, desire uh, was to build this temple, it's understandable. We can see how uh, he wanted that permanent uh, spot, that permanent place, beautiful, impressive, uh, permanent uh, place for the, the tent or the tabernacle uh, to be permanently stationed. But again, the Lord did not give permission to do it. Question. Have you ever have a strong desire to do something for the Lord just to show him your appreciation for his goodness but did not consult him first or did not hear from him first? Have you ever had, just like David, that strong desire? And so uh, the next point is wrong planning. The Lord did not command David or Nathan to build a cedar temple such as David was proposing. This temple would be God's design and God's design only, not man. Because a lot of these uh, system was foreshadowing what was to come. The temple would one day become the church, the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul put it this way in a Second Corinthians chapter 5. In Second Corinthians chapter 5, uh, start reading at verse 1, says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. See here how uh, the Apostle Paul, how he, he draw a spiritual conclusion about our uh, eternal body, our future uh, body, which is not made of hands. We also uh, see how uh, the writer of Hebrews, how he uh, made a connection uh, to Christ and the tabernacle. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse uh, 11, it says, But Christ being come, an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, 
not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. We see here spiritual connections. Spiritual connections. A better high priest. And this better high priest was always pointing to Jesus Christ. Who would enter once through a greater and more perfect tent. Which is God's plan for salvation. And that's uh, what uh, the prophets foreshadow. What they, they foretell about what Christ would do when he come. We start out, started out with the tent. The movable tent. Then we move to the tabernacle. Then we move to the temple. And then ultimately uh, to the body of Christ. And Jesus will one day come back. And give us that new body. It's called glorification. We will be in our glorified body. So uh, this is why again David. Uh, he did not get permission. And God has his own plan. For uh, this uh, tent. And you know when we think about a uh, planning. And how it's tempting so often. Especially when we are in uh, that place of power and authority. It's very tempting. We think sometimes that uh, whatever we plan, that it's okay. It's okay to do so. It's okay to do so with the Lord. It's all right. We have good motives. We have good intention. We uh, sometimes think that, you know, if we're in leadership, that, you know, God puts us there and it's okay for us to uh, put these plans into motion. But sometimes, like we see here, if we didn't hear from the Lord or if he didn't uh, give permission to do it, don't do it. And, and if uh, sometimes some of us who likes to give advice like Nathan, uh, when it comes to handling God's business, don't do it. And so question, what would you say is the danger of leaders and followers too quickly to approve major spiritual directions without really hearing from the Lord? What is the danger? Back to the lesson, we will now go to section two. It will deal with God protected David. That's verses eight through verses 10. Verse eight. Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people over Israel. Verse 9. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thine sight, and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. And so uh, these following verses here, it, it shows us God's protection for David and the Davidic covenant that God gave through the prophet Nathan. We see at least three promises. Promise number one. God promised to give a David a great name. He took David from a lowly place. And raise him up to his throne to be ruler over his people, making his name great in all the earth, protecting him from all his enemies. And we see here uh, the Lord reminds David of where he brought him from. The Lord did it, did all of that for him. And so the Lord did need David to build him a house. And so question, how does sometimes many leaders fall? 
Well, you know, sometimes they allow the fame to get to their heads and for, they forget, they forget about who put them there. And uh, even though David had good intentions, this was God's business alone to initiate, not David's. Promise number two. We see a promise of secure, security, secure homeland for his people. The Lord promised David that under his reign, under his rulership, he would establish a permanent and secure place for Israel. The Lord, uh, he knew that as a shepherd, David had a great concern for his people's uh, well-being, for their welfare. And the Lord would appoint the place. Who is doing the appointing? Yep, the Lord is doing it. That's a part of why we can't just take things up on our own and start doing things without God's approval. David wanted to build this beautiful, impressive temple. And the Lord kindly says, thanks, but no thanks. And, and this right here, uh, David was to understand that uh, the Lord present was visible through his leadership. Just by being chosen, the Lord already reminded him where he brought him from. Just by being chosen from such a lowly place, being chosen over all his um, older brothers, that alone, that alone would show as a great testimony uh, to God's presence in his life and to his people. The Lord didn't need him to construct uh, this impressive building for him to dwell in. In fact, the Lord uh, says, let me build you a permanent house. And this uh, house would be greater than uh, David's uh, offer to build the Lord a house. Because David's house or dynasty would last forever. What the Lord was uh, planning to do for David and his dynasty, his descendants, was forever pointing to the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. David was not qualified to build this temple because he was a man of war and God was looking for peace. And this brings us to the next promise, a promise of peace. If we take a look at first our Chronicles chapter 22 and start looking at verse 9, we're talking about how David could not build the temple, but his descendant could. And God promised a promise of peace. Uh, uh, First Chronicles chapter 20, 22, verse 9. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Did you hear that? Verse 10, he shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. And again, these are all our prophecies that foretell, foreshadowing what was to come. Jesus Christ would uh, fulfill these in uh, its in, in completeness. Back to the lesson, we will now go to section 3. It will deal with an eternal kingdom, verses 11 through verses 13. Verse 11, And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies also the lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house 
And again, we're seeing these different promises. Promise number one, we see that the Lord promised a David's descendant, a dynasty, a son who will build the temple and everlasting a kingdom. And the Lord is the one doing the planning. The, one, the Lord is the one making the decision. And he continues to talk about house. And the term house here can be seen uh, with a double meaning. David, he used it as a material sense in a physical form, building a house in a physical form uh, for the Lord, building the temple. But Nathan, he used uh, this term here in a figurative uh, sense as a dynasty, a household, a descendants of David, uh, which again is pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ, our eternal king. And this a great a promise that God promised David right here, it had future fulfillment to it. And David uh, understood that because he didn't get mad when uh, the Lord said, no, you can't build the temple. Actually, he instructed Solomon and he helped him to uh, build the temple. He instructed him to obey the Lord and follow the Lord's commandments, David uh, gracefully accepted God's no, and again he totally supported his son uh, Solomon, whom God gave uh, the permission to build instead. Verse 12, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Verse 13. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The Lord promised here to set up uh, thy seed after the, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. His, his own son, I will establish his kingdom. The Lord, he now speaks about David's uh, natural son. In particularly Solomon. Solomon was the one who uh, the Lord chose. He had chosen Solomon to carry on David's dynasty. And in uh, First Chronicles chapter 28, uh, David, he gave uh, Solomon his final instructions again about obeying the Lord and keeping the Lord's uh, commandments. God I promise a David this eternal kingdom. And you know, as, as Christians, as believers, we should view this as a proof, as that proof that Jesus Christ was and is indeed the promised Messiah. God indeed did raise him up. And along the way, while Jesus was here on earth in his teachings, Along the way, he told his followers about his identity. In Matthew 26 and verse 61, he also claimed to have an eternal a throne in Matthew 19, uh, verses 28 and 29. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 30, also that legitimized uh, Jesus' claim as the son of David. So along the way, Jesus was identifying himself to be this a Messiah that prophets foretell about him. And we see the sovereignty of God uh, here, his power and his ability to establish not a house of cedar, not a house built by a man's uh, hands, a physical material, but a house through a descendant of people who were chosen. God chose David and put him up there on that throne and promised him to establish this a future and eternal a kingdom, meaning Christ Jesus. We will now go to section four. It will deal with 
David in Israel's history, verses 14 through verses 16. Verse 14, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. 15, but but my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, which I put away before thee. 16, and thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. And we see how these uh, next verses here spells out the terms of the everlasting a kingdom. David and his descendant does not get to do what they want to do. God is in charge. The Lord will act to them as a father and he will give fatherly discipline. With sonship comes a father's discipline, a father's correction. And we learn the importance of discipline in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, and also in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 5. And so the question is, what is the importance of disciplining uh, our children? Well, think about it. If we don't bring corrections at home, someone else out there will do it. How about that? And God's promise right here, uh, he promised that he would not reject uh, David's uh, dynasty because of a sin. He will punish severely, but he would not remove David's descendant the way he removed Saul's descendant. Remember, uh, Saul, King Saul died in battle, and so did um, all of his sons, and that's in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 31. The Lord promised here that that will not happen to David. The Lord is faithful to his promise. Verse 16, thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. We continue to see that kingdom established forever. You know, the Lord is faithful, and because he's faithful, we can take him for his word. We can take him at his word that he will cause his promise that he promises us. All his promises, he will cause them to come to pass. They may not come when we want them to come. They may not come immediately, but they will come eventually. God, I hear he promises a mercies for uh, David's son. Even, even when he sins, he promised to punish him, but he would give a mercy. He would not uh, take away the throne from him. And that these are what the prophets foretell about the greater and ultimate fulfillment of these promises. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 and 6, Jeremiah 23, verse 5, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. If we also look at Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verses 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7, Of the increase of his government and the peace shall there be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Did you hear that? These were prophets who prophesy about the coming Messiah. They foretell 
about the coming Messiah. And again, God's promise for the house of David is completely fulfilled in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior and eternal King. As we close our lesson, we will take a look at uh, the Bible application and it reads, How satisfied are we with what God has given us? Some of us own homes that are 25 or more years old and we find ourselves constantly criticizing them and telling others how badly we want newer and nicer homes. If we drive a car that's 10 years old, we earn for the latest model luxury vehicle. As Christians, we want to be careful not to discount the blessings that God has given to each of us. We need to understand that God does not do blanket blessings. He blesses us individually according to our needs and his purpose. Our relationship with our creator is personal. We don't want to get sidetracked and distracted by material possessions. Our eyes must remain on him and his will for our lives. And this is a part of why we have to know Jesus personally for ourselves. In this way, our focus will stay on him for who he is, not for what he can do for us and gives us for who he is. In this way, we uh, will have an open mind into what he has for us because his plans for our lives is always better than any plan we could come up with. And so as we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to have an open mind for what the Lord has for us. Because his plan is better than ours. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, Please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.